Admittedly, the last time I had a serious interest in Chrome OS was in 2012 where I had a piece of crap Acer C710 laptop, and then again in 2015 when I got my hands on a used Chromebook Pixel. At the time, Chrome OS was so bare bones that I literally left it on a shelf and completely forgot about the entire project as a whole. That is until October of 2023 when Google announced the Chromebook Plus initiative, meant to standardize the Chromebook lineup with minimum hardware requirements and exclusive features to match. Needless to say, this caught my eye after flat out ignoring Chromebooks for the past seven years, and today we're gonna take a look at one of the more affordable and interesting Chromebook Plus options in the Lenovo Flex 5i. But before we start diving in, we probably should cover the hardware situation first so you know what you're getting into. In my opinion, physical hardware has never been a strong suit of third-party Chromebook manufacturers, but I will say the Flex 5i is an overall solid package. On top, we have a two-tone aluminum lid that does feel quite premium, especially in the morning when the metal is cold to the touch. The bottom half of the laptop is an all-plastic shell with a slight satin finish that extends over the trackpad and backlit keyboard, both of which are quite comfortable to use for productivity tasks. As for ports, we have a decent selection with one USB-C, one USB-A, one SD card reader, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the left-hand side. And on the right, we have one lone USB-C port alongside your Kensington lock, power button, and volume rocker, which I basically only use while in tablet mode. The display is great for its price range. It's a 14 inch 1920 by 1200 IPS panel that maxes out at 300 nits brightness. Obviously, compared against a high-end laptop like my 2021 MacBook Pro, the screen isn't as bright, viewing angles aren't as forgiving, and the colors are much less pronounced. As I said though, for this $4.99 starting price, this was more than enough to handle my basic productivity tasks like web browsing, script writing, and the occasional low stakes video. I should mention though, the Flex 5i does have a touchscreen and has support for a USI 2.0 stylus pen. Palm rejection is present for those that are wondering with latency varying from app to app. In my use case, I really liked using the stylus for navigation and tablet mode as the mouse-like precision did bring a new layer of efficiency to my workflow. But overall, it still does not have the finesse that you could expect from an S Pen on Samsung devices or an Apple Pencil. Not to mention the hover features like seeing a preview of my cursor or feedback I receive when holding the stylus over a compatible item are not present, at least from what I can tell. That said, I'd say the physical hardware is great, especially for a laptop in this price range, but there are a few compromises that would definitely irritate me if I was using this for the long run. First is probably the speakers, and while I see some people say they're good, I can't share that same opinion. In completely silent rooms, of course, the speakers can get plenty loud for any kind of content consumption or video conferencing, but as soon as you have any sort of background noise like a heater or a fan, you quickly notice how underpowered those dual 2 watt speakers are. And if you want to consume content in the tablet mode, the speakers get even worse as they play the sound away from you, which makes them very frustrating to work with. Another issue I bumped into was the insane amount of flexing around the keyboard area. To be fair, you shouldn't notice this during regular usage, but once in a while you do press down on an area that gives way more than I'd like it to. Moving on, let's touch on performance super quick before we get into the software. All you need to know is every Chromebook Plus model ships with at least an Intel Core i3 or AMD Ryzen 7000 series, alongside 8 gig of RAM and 128 gigabyte SSD at minimum. Google says the reason for this is to build a guaranteed standard of performance that people can depend on, which to me is a responsible route for them to go, especially if they wanna keep growing the Chromebook brand. The Lenovo 5i is sporting an Intel i3 processor that handles my normal usage of web apps and Android apps from the Play Store just fine. During my time with the Flex, I edited thumbnails in Photoshop, tweaked photos in Snapseed, and used Magic Eraser within Google Photos. On busier days, I was also multitasking with split screen view, playing music or videos in the background while cycling through dozens of tabs at once, all with no issue during my usage. To my surprise, even gaming was a solid experience, and today in 2024, you have a ton of options at your disposal. Of course, you can play web-based browser games as most people do on Chromebooks, but with the implementation of the Play Store, you get access to almost the entire library of Android games. Games like Minecraft, Star Wars The Old Republic, Alto's Adventure, Limbo, Dead Cells, and many more all ran well with maybe a frame drop here or there, although some more intense mobile games like COD Mobile straight up crashed 
constantly, so definitely not all Play Store games work here. Cloud Gaming, however, is a really great tool in the Chromebook arsenal, and as long as you aren't playing any hyper-competitive FPS games, I think most people can have a worthwhile experience. In my situation, I use GeForce Now primarily because Google is heavily advertising it, and I wanted to know what the experience was like firsthand. Thankfully, things are pretty great here. I ended up paying for the $20 a month subscription that gives me access to an RTX 4080 and 4K streaming up to 120 FPS. Also, something that made things much better was the integration with Steam and Xbox Game Pass, so all 200 something of the games I already own were immediately available for me to play. During my testing, I fired up Modern Warfare 3 and Cyberpunk 2077 on Max Graphics. Personally, I found the latency to be a non-issue, especially with story, single-player focused games. Multiplayer games do work fine here as well, but if you're competitive in any way like I am, you will feel every millisecond of latency. Obviously, if you're a longtime PC your console gamer, I think your brain will be able to tell the difference either way, but the point is really to get you as close as possible to a usable gaming experience without having to spend a ton of money on an actual console or a thousand plus dollar graphics card. On that front, I think the end result is great for casual gamers or those that frequently spend time away from said dedicated gaming machines. My only advice for those that plan on gaming a lot is to use an external monitor that is bigger with a higher refresh rate or go for a separate Chromebook all together that has a display that allows for a more cinematic experience, preferably anything more than 60 frames per second. Finally, we are at the point where we can talk all about the software, and in my opinion, this is where Chrome OS changes the most since I've used it last in 2015. Over the years, Google has added a ton of features that actually make sense, and because of that, Chromebooks are going to be on my radar for the foreseeable future. Getting right into it, I was extremely impressed with the connectivity paired with an Android phone. In my case, I'm I'm using the Pixel Fold and I can do convenient things like unlock my Chromebook with my phone, automatically share a hotspot when I'm not connected to the internet, stream apps from my phone to the Chromebook and use them fully with no compromises. You can forward your notifications, access photos and media from your phone, and I'm probably missing a lot more. Simply put, these features to me are game changing, especially as an Android enthusiast, and this honestly is what I expected the Pixel tablet to be all along. I'll take it a step further and call me crazy, but I think this should be the future of Android tablets. In fact, we're already there since the Chromebook Plus initiative makes Chrome OS feel so much more pixel-like now than ever before. There's material you color theming everywhere within the OS, Google Photos is slowly starting to get pixel staple features like Magic Eraser, HDR enhancements, and Portrait Blur. They're also adding a ton of AI features starting with enhanced video calls and many more coming down the pipeline like AI generated writing suggestions, AI text summaries, AI backgrounds for video calls, and AI generated wallpapers. Now that we got all the important stuff out of the way, I wanted to round this review out talking about the battery. On the website, Google says these Chromebook Plus models should get approximately 10 hours of battery life, and to me, I would say that is achievable with lighter usage. In my case, I was testing this out heavily on a daily basis with gaming, content consumption, and multitasking all at maximum brightness, which got me around 7 to 8-ish hours. But like I said, I'm intentionally pushing its limits. Charging speeds were fine, at least from what I'm used to. Connecting the Chromebook to a 100 watt charging brick got me to 100% in approximately an hour and 30-ish minutes, which to me is more than enough. So with everything we talked about today, I can confidently say my mind has changed on the capability of Chromebooks. Yes, there is still no replacement for a Windows machine if you have critical aspects of your workflow that require it. But I would argue today, a $400 Chromebook will last much longer and be a much better value than a $400 Windows laptop depending on your use case. For the average consumer that is using primarily web apps and is content with the offerings from the Play Store, this is a no-nonsense, clean-cut solution to a lot of basic computer needs. Either way guys, let me know what you think of the current state of the Chromebook Plus line moving into 2024. Do you think there is a long-term future in this lineup and do you think that Chrome OS has become a great value these days? Leave a comment and let me know, but in the meantime guys, I'm getting out of here. This has been Jordan Floyd with 9to5Google. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.